as we said, trade deadline uh, February 9th, so Thursday. Um, we'll get a new rotation piece. Uh, so some things on this for Con Cork Moss demanded a trade. Uh, and uh, Matisse Thibel is demanding a lot of uh, trade interest from teams all over. Um, so, but apparently we are uh, linked to certain players, and all these players um, are over six foot nine. So we're looking at guys who can be a nice little backup to Embiid, or even play alongside him. Um, and the players are Jared Vanderbilt, Nas Reed, and two former 76ers, one that Tasia mentioned, and Andre Drummond, and then Nerlens Noel, a, a process guy. And a fun nugget about that is we just our G League team just traded for um, Jaleel Okafor. And if we were somehow to trade for Nerlens and Noel, we'd have Noel, Ja, and um, and then beat on the same team. Some three of the process guys on the team together. It'd be, be cool if we especially won the championship to have three of the process guys on the team. But um, my question to you guys is, do you think we make a specific move? Um, and what kind of player should we go after? And any of the players that I named, uh, does any of those guys ring of interest for you? I mean, we we spoke about the center position. I guess you know those those guys fit um, from a standpoint of rebounding, you know, some activity, um, motoring defensively with Noel Nerland. So it's that I think we've addressed. Um, Jared Vanderbilt, good size. He's a wing though. He's he's not a someone that I think you could play behind Joel. Um, who am I missing? Who's the fourth guy? Uh, Nas Reed. Nas Reed. Nas Reed. Nas Reed's interesting because Nas Reed can score and shoot a three. Yeah. Uh, I think out of all the guys that we mentioned, besides the Marcus Cousins, he's the one guy that, that can score it and can't shoot it. From he's three. the best offensive player of that bunch. Um, so he could be a guy that you could probably put a minute, you know, play beside him a minute or two. Yeah, and he's good athlete, you know, decent athlete. I mean, he, some fl he'll flush it on you. So he he's an interesting guy. I, I can say that 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 one right there kind of depends on what you give up. So I would be interested to see how that would look. And he's young too. Mm -hmm. I don't think we make any significant moves. I think most of uh, most big Sixers Twitter accounts think we'll just make a move to duck the tax. Uh, other accounts think we should say screw the tax, go all in because we're close. We're close to this thing, and you might not get this close in a long time. Go all in right now and say screw it all. Um, do you think we're close enough to ring to justify spending those tax dollars on the rotational player? Yeah, just shoring up whatever you know. Yeah, I mean, I think if you, if, I think yeah, if, if it's a, if it's a guy that's favorable contract and 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 he's a guy that's a rotation player, consistent rotation player. I don't think you just make a trade just to make a trade and for a guy you just be like, oh, we don't know. Um, but I just don't know how you how are you gonna go get a rotational player without giving up a rotational player. That, yeah, that's my question is like like what what kind of move are you gonna yeah. make? Because I think if we're gonna trade Tobias for uh, see Tobias. He's, is Tobias in the last year of his deal, where he has one more year left. One more year. Um, a lot of these, his name would be coming up a lot yeah, more. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I kind of figured that. Um, a lot of these moves are like probably lateral moves, and that's what I'm saying. Like, do you get a lateral move? Um, or and Maury you, actually, Maury talked about that recently. He said, you know, our our rotation is so tight right now that it's are, is anyone we get really going to crack our rotation at this point? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, you're not going to crack the rotation unless you're giving up a rotational guy. Like, I, I just don't. In most of these moves, if you do do, if you do make a trade like that, it would be a lateral move. I do like, I'm a big, and I know most Sixer Twitter is the same way. I'm a big Vanderbilt guy because I think he can play some small ball five against some small fives. Um, like I could see Vanderbilt playing against like a Claxton. I think he'd be fine with that because he's six nine. And, but I think he could also play wing minutes if we got rid of like a Thibel. Then he could guard a Jalen Brown or a Tatum for for a little while if we need him and to. You're not so, playing PJ. Then. I think you could stagger him a bit. Either have PJ or Vanderbilt on one of those two guys. That so 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 in some ways, 
you you think he's better, but that's a lateral move to me then. But at least it's a guy who can play two different things that I think we need. I think when he comes down to wing, who can guard big scoring yeah, wing. I don't think he can play center that. like that, though. You don't think what? I don't think he can play center like that. Even against small fives? You think he's too small for well, Nick Claxton? <laughs> what? He's not small. No, I'm saying you think he's... He just gave us 25 and 10 with Joel. <laughs> I'm so- <laughs> oh, oh, you're being Claxton. Yes. Yeah, but they're what is he a six ten? They're about the same. I mean, they're about an inch apart. He's not like towering over Vanderbilt. You know what I mean? I don't know how tall he is? I'm just saying, like he just gave us that with what we have now. So I mean, uh, now yeah. we put a smaller guy on it. <laughs> That's because Joel was more worried about offense. Oh, okay. Well, All right. Just, <laughs> just saying, like you know, if you look at he's six eleven. Yeah, okay. So that, that, that was a game. That was the offensive game of his life. And, he, and he's I'm, long, though, but I'm just saying, if you look at the top four teams outside of us, they all have bigs and active bigs. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's, what, you, that's what you – and the number one seed in the West – has a big yeah, but Montrez Harold are back up five right now. What's he like six seven? No, I'm just saying, but he but he's a center. He's a very undersized center, but yeah, he yeah, plays he's, that he's way. He's a center because just, he can't you, guard a wing. You said we wouldn't have Montrez go to to the wing. Montrez yeah, going to the wing is like asking Jerv Vanderbilt to play center. No, nah, if you were if you were if you had Tucker and let's say we had Tucker and Vanderbilt on the court at the same time, you put Tucker on a on a big wing and you put Tucker at small ball five. I mean, Tucker was guarding. I'm not doing that in the playoffs. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going in there and then playing Boston and having you know Al Horford or Williams. Tucker was guarding Jokic though. He can't guard Al Horford. Yeah, Jokic plays on the perimeter. Like he and he has the ball, so you can you can zoom in your defense and zone up on him with PJ on him. But if you're talking about a guy that you're gonna put. Him on Claxton, and he's your primary defender. That's he Claxton won't even have a ball. He's just setting screens. Then we're gonna switch and end up with a guard on him. I just think in today's NBA, where it's not really a center league anymore, you could get away with an undersized. You can't do that against Cleveland. No, you can't do that against. Well, Mobley spends most of his time at the three point line too, but you couldn't have him against Allen. No. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I don't think you can do it against Boston either. So you're gonna say we're gonna put a we're gonna do small ball against Boston and their win perimeter players are already bigger than ours. A lot of the guys we're naming don't have superior offensive games though. Mobley's a three point shooter. Allen Allen's a alley ooper and like maybe a baby. I'm just saying dog. though, but but it's the offensive rebound and the activity and the setting screen the rope like it gives them an advantage. Bet with Miami, they can't guard Bam. You can't put a small guy on him like that. That's that's five teams right there. The top five teams besides us. You think Bam would abuse Tucker too? Yeah, he, he, no, I'm talking about a possession or a game. But if you're talking about the playoff, I'm looking as a playoff or a series. Man, they're going to make an adjustment on that. You can probably get away with it in a game as the game is going on. But if you try that, that next game, they're like, okay, well, this is what we're going to do when they go to that lineup. Yeah, if we're talking about switching, if you, if you had Drummond, let's say, Drummond will also switch on a guard and get abused too, though, if they do, if they do a pick and roll. Then you have Drummond guard. You don't have to wings. switch, though. I mean, I, mean, I, I guess you don't have – I mean, let's uh, – yeah. You could try not to switch. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, uh, with, with, with Jared Vanderbilt, you're going to switch. Yeah, because he can he can guard a guard out there. Yes. But Drummond, you don't have to, is what I'm saying. But if you had – if you had – depends what the lineup is. If you had Tucker as man trying to switch with Vanderbilt's man, both those guys can pretty much guard either guy there, a wing or the big on that team, unless it's, like, Brooke Lopez and – yeah, I mean they, they would get a yeah, but if if I'm if I'm playing against that lineup, I'm going to have a guard, whoever Maxi is guarding or James is guarding, 
set a screen first, get them into the rotation, then set that pick and roll. And so, P, have, so PJ and Vanderbilt isn't involved. One of them is not involved. That's how they, that's all you do, just multiple pick and rolls to get the matchup you want. We see people teams do it all the time, chasing matchups. That's not going to change. Yeah, I just think we have the most versatility with uh, Vanderbilt. I mean, it's not, like we have, it's not like we have size behind Embiid now anyway. So at least yeah, we have a guy. I'm that just saying, play. like, like if we're if if I'm just saying, and, like, and Vanderbilt's a really good. We're gonna win a championship, and we want to win a championship, and and our concern is the guy that's gonna play five to ten minutes behind Joel. Like that can't be the biggest concern. Well, that's, that's, gonna play 38, 39 minutes in the playoffs. That's or, why I like Vanderbilt. He, he can play other positions, not just back up Joel. You know what I mean? He can, he can, he can and I think Nas Reed can too. That's what I'm saying. I got, and he can shoot yeah. a three. Yeah. If we're going to go, if we're addressing the big, I'm just saying a guy that's bigger, mm -hmm. heftier, as far as positioning, being able to guard a bigger guy, easier. But see, our second weakness is wing defense. So the not, I mean, that's why I was hoping to try to check half boxes on both of those with a uh, Vanderbilt. Uh, yeah, I, I don't understand how wing defense is a weakness if we added Melton in the lineup and we had and we signed PJ Tucker. Tatum and Brown are really good. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, like we got to think about, like, if that's our weakness, second weakness. Then something isn't right. Then we can't. Then we we kidding ourselves talking about championship. Especially, I mean, we're talking about getting rid of Thibault because that's one of the I'm main. I'm just saying we're kidding ourselves talking about championship if if this is what if this is what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. We just, I mean, wait, we'll see it. Yeah, we'll see it tomorrow because night. because you 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 go through like we're gonna have to play Boston. Brooklyn, Milwaukee, Cleveland, Miami. Most likely we're going to have to play out of those five, at least mi minimum two of them and possibly three of them. Some of the best wings in the league. Yeah. Durant, Taylor. You're going to have to see somebody. Yeah. Yeah. You also got factor, you got to factor in the fact that you know we've multiple playoffs we've had where Embiid has missed a game or two, and we were scared by you know the fact that we had to start DeAndre Jordan last year. We had the rotation of uh, Paul Reed. I mean, what I want, I mean, if we do Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt's not going to start at five. If we, if we if we do if we do do that, we're going to have Trez or Paul Reed. We have the same problem we're having now. If we do a Vanderbilt type trade, whereas I think a Drummond or Nas Reed would actually solidify that if. God forbid that were to happen if we had to miss MB in the playoffs at some point. Yeah, but the, the year we had Dwight Howard, even when MB was out, we weren't even starting Dwight Howard. We kept him in a six man role. We had Tony Bradley, correct? That was not, an, another actual big, not not a Vanderbilt type. No, no, I, I know, but Dwight was MB's main backup. So it's not like he moved up and like started instead of him. He still got probably more minutes than Bradley did, even though he didn't start. And I think that goes by matchup too. I think Vanderbilt goes by matchup. I, yeah, I don't think you start him against Brook Lopez, but there aren't that many dominating bigs anymore. I mean, Embiid is well, it's not dominating guy. from the standpoint of how we envision old bigs dominating. It's mm -hmm. dominating bigs, but they dominate in different ways. Yeah, because you can't tell me the bigs in Brook Lopez is not a dominating from the way they use him, and them boys in Cleveland. Are dominated from the way they're used. Robert Williams and Al Horford, and the way they're used, and Bam out of bounds is probably the best out of all of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's yeah, they aren't none of them are Joel, but they're very effective at what they do and very helpful what they're doing for their team. And Vanderbilt is a very good rebounder, just for the record. At the as a perimeter player, yeah, averaging eight a game as a wing player, yes. But if he's at center, is he still that kind of rebounder? Because you got to box a little more. 
Mm -hmm. I'd have to see. I mean, he does he does play some center minutes for the Jazz. I'm not a lot because he's. I don't think he's even averaging that many minutes. Period. But um, he does. He's he's a very talented and long, athletic guy. Um, But teams are different. Like you just, I just, I just think it's you got to be careful when you plug and play, taking the guy what he's doing in one team and putting him in another, and and thinking that it's going to be the same. And you just don't know if he's not used the same. And with the same effectiveness, same amount of minutes, same way, it's different. Is he how many minutes are we gonna play him? And if we do play him in those minutes, who are we taking those minutes from? Yeah. Because we already see the backup center minutes is you know, that's a roller coaster. So yeah. where else are you getting those minutes from? It depends who you trade. If you trade Matisse, you get Matisse's minutes. Well, Matisse wasn't playing not too long ago. Mm-hmm. He's playing a lot now. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we played eleven guys the last game. That's too many, too many people. That's too many players. Yeah, Matisse is averaging twelve minutes a game this year. Not a lot. And but House is, hasn't been playing much either. No, House is in the doghouse. Yeah. yeah so I see you trying to stick that in there. <laughs> <laughs> Spur of the moment. Just thought of it. <laughs> yes. Um. And then so, Ferk wants out. Ferk, Ferk wants to demand a trade. I mean, yeah, I mean, come on. He, he, he demand or he asked for a trade? They said the, the title, the, the it was demand was the word used. Yeah, did he say it, though? That's what the people that wrote the article said. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no. The, joke, to say the joke was he demanded a trade and Sixers was like, cool. We'll see if that happens. I mean, they, can with, they can move a shooter. Get a second for him, then oh, he can be moved. There's some teams that will take him. Yeah, but they're saying Marcus that to get rid of his five million dollar salary, we probably have to package a second to do that. Really? That yeah, like the- Dwayne Dwayne Devin just got traded from the Heat to clear salary, and they had to package a second with him to get a team to take him. Because you're really doing the team. The team is really doing you a favor. Right? Absolutely. So yeah, I mean, if we're gonna get you gotta, you gotta give package. them something for doing you a favor. So, yeah, we probably have to give someone something, and we don't have many. We don't have much to give anymore. So, yeah, unless unless the team is like, we need some shooting. Um, he's got two more years left. Two. Ooh. This and next year. Yeah, that's that's interesting. That's probably yeah. why. It's not a lot of- that's also why a lot of people like Vanderbilt too, because Vanderbilt has two more years on a cheap deal remaining. Um, I would and, say, and Thibel's basically gone, most likely. So. If we're giving him away, at least we're getting two more years of a good, promising young wing. And if you move with Thibault, you got to move him with that. Who, Ferk? Yeah. 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 And you combine their salaries, you get, I think, up to like nine or 10 million, maybe 11. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see what we do. 